This is Vader Reviews. We are honored that you would join us. This isn't the first time Episode 7 has disappointed me. In what is hopefully the final chapter of the Book of Boba Fett. And all I can say is, gee whiz, where's the last Jedi gremlin Yoda with a lightning bolt when you need him? Because when it comes to the Book of Boba Fett, page turners, it was not. Yet again, a classic and iconic Star Wars character has been downgraded in order to prop up the new replacement, namely the Mandalorian, who has taken Boba's rightful place as one of the galaxy's most formidable bounty hunters. Boba Fett, formerly known as the most ruthless and notorious bounty hunter in the galaxy, is now the Disney plush version of a gangster, a crime lord who commits very little crime, and instead fights to bring peace, security, and justice to his new empire. The only problem is, the entire series undercuts him at every opportunity. No one respects him. Everyone talks back to him without consequence, and they made him a weak leader. I honestly feel bad for Tomorrow Morrison, because he's an amazing actor, and I was looking forward to seeing him get his own series, because I loved him as Jango Fett in Attack of the Clones, and he deserved much better material than he was given. Boba Fett? More like Boo Boo Fett, or Bobo the Clown, he's so inept. The series was boba fetted by many narrative problems, and in this latest insult we find our hapless hero trying to assemble an army to defend Moss Espa from the drug-running fishmen, the Pikes. So who you gonna call when faced with an army of stoner guppies? Does Boba enlist Bosk, Dangar, Forlom, Zookus, or IG-88? No. We get the stupid extras from Moss Pelgo and the Go Go Gadget Moped Squad. Honestly, it all felt very Disney Story Group. For two seasons, The Mandalorian has been steering Star Wars back in the direction that I personally enjoy. But this series felt more in the vein of Solo, a Star Wars story in terms of writing. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized this is the Boba Fett equivalent of Solo or The Last Jedi. In The Last Jedi, Luke Skywalker was made to be a loser in order to prop up the new characters. In Solo, Kira defeats the film's main villain while Han literally hides behind furniture. In The Book of Boba Fett, his character is undercut the entire series, and much like Solo, he doesn't even defeat the series' main antagonist. This is why I can't help but wonder if the plot for this series may have been a holdover storyline from the cancelled Josh Trank Boba Fett film we were supposed to get a while back. Because episodes 1 through 4, combined with episode 7, feel like one cohesive story about Boba Fett. And while I may not enjoy the direction of the story, at least it is centered around the protagonist. But much like a hover train carrying space blow through the Junlin Waste, the plot gets derailed in chapter 5 and 6, when Boba Fett becomes the Book of Noba Fett opting instead to squeeze in two episodes of The Mandalorian to explain how Mando gets his Grogu back so the little Muppet baby can show up in the finale. And what a lackluster finale it was. I never thought I could possibly be bored watching Boba Fett have a blaster fight in the streets of Tatooine. But congratulations, Rodriguez. You managed it. I still can't wrap my brain around how the guy who made that wizard Boba Fett episode for The Mandalorian directed all of the worst episodes of a Boba Fett show. I didn't care about anything in this series. No one's motivations were made clear, so it all felt meaningless. Also, the big Wookiee guy gets shot like 50 times, and one minute he's limping around like he's injured, the next minute he's running around like he's Arnold Schwarzenegger from Commando. They wasted so much screen time having the townspeople from Mos Pelgo show up. And I don't care about a bunch of stupid extras. I don't care that the fat Weequay bartender is there. It doesn't matter to me. I would have preferred more screen time for Boba Fett being cool, or actually bringing in cool characters that I want to see that have a connection to Boba, like the classic bounty hunters. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this stuff out. So can somebody please explain how the same team who created the Mandalorian screwed up so bad? Did they do it on purpose to make Din look better? I don't know. For all their grand talk about respect on this show, it is painfully ironic how disrespectful every character is to Boba Fett 
throughout the entire series. When he gives the order to fall back to his palace so they can fight the pikes from a fortified position, all of his subordinates tell him no directly to his face and lay out their plan for what they're going to do instead. And what does Boba do? Shoot them? Light them on fire with his flamethrower, perhaps? Give them a stern talking to, at least? No. He caves to what the group wants to do, completely gutting him of all leadership. And to add insult to injury, Boba doesn't even kill the leader of the Pikes, who, as it turns out, ordered the death of his little Sand People family. And not just the men, but the women, and the children, too. Guess the Pikes aren't all bad after all. But anyway, if they wanted some sort of payoff to the series, Fennec should have killed everyone in the room except the Pike leader. Boba walks in as the smoke clears and says, You know why I'm here. Then he takes his gaffy stick and runs the cowering Pike leader through, pinning him to his chair, avenging his Tuscan family. Honestly, Instead of taking over the Tatooine underworld, to me, a much more interesting and compelling story could have been Boba Fett turning over a new leaf after his time with a peaceful group of sand people who nurse him back to health rather than enslaving him when they find him in the desert. But when the Tuscans are killed in a botched attempt on Fett's life to settle an old score, Boba decides Tatooine has been controlled by criminals for long enough and sets out on a mission to avenge the Tuscans and hunt down every crime lord and gang on Tatooine, becoming essentially the Punisher of the Star Wars galaxy. The series could have also explored the underworld side of things, as the crime lords begin to realize the man they used to hire when they wanted someone dead is now gunning for them. Their council meetings could be reminiscent of the Dark Knight, when the gangs were trying to figure out what to do about Batman. And Cad Bane, like the Joker, could even interrupt one of their meetings and say he'll kill Boba for a price. Another great touch that would pay respect to classic westerns like John Wayne's Big Jake could be that everywhere Boba Fett goes, people tell him, I heard you were dead, to which he would respond, not hardly. It would be a nice way to bring Boba back to his classic western roots. In the end, the only episodes I truly enjoyed from this series were the episodes Boba wasn't in, and that is truly sad. All I can say is, I hope Kenobi is much better than this. Don't fail me again. But those are my thoughts on it. What did you think? And before we go, I'd like to take a moment to thank Hero of the Empire. I'm just happy to be a stormtrooper, Adam Jordan, for his generosity. This week's video was brought to you by his support. If you're new here, join the Empire today by subscribing, and together we will rule the internet. And always remember, you don't know the power of the dark side.